Hello, I'm Natalie Davis, holistic health practitioner of 31 years and an advanced certified instructor of colon hydrotherapy. I'm also nationally board certified as a colon hydrotherapist as well as an IAC certified instructor. And I have to, to date, I have done more than 71,000 of these colon hydrotherapy sessions with clients. I'm here to talk to you about what are the causes of constipation. Well, there's several factors. There's a physical factor, which has a lot more to your body's influences around um, strictures in the colon. If you have chronic low back pain, uh, there is a cutting off of the blood supply to the colon, so it narrows the lumen, which is the opening and size of the uh, roundness of the colon. And normally it's supposed to be two and a half inches in, in di diameter, uh, so with strictures in the colon, and chronic low back pain, not enough blood flow going, getting to it, it can narrow down the lumen of the uh, colon, causing it to be strictured. And that can create some holding patterns in your colon. And limiting also the motility, the ability of your body to feel the urge and the contractions of movement uh, to go to the restroom. And if those bodily signals are important, and if you're not getting enough of it, there's the physical components that can limit uh, and cause uh, constipation. But I'll come back to that, um, because diet also plays a big factor. If your diet is one that has a high in carbs, that's a lot of wheat products, your pastas, your starches like rice and potatoes and breads, all of that are binding to the colon. And that combination of protein, which is a meat, heavy protein, uh, meat, turkey, fish, all of that can combined with a starch can also bind up the colon. Not enough fiber, um, fresh leafy green organic vegetables to move things through, to add uh, roughage and uh, fiber to the diet. And of course, dehydration is a big factor. Uh, when you're dehydrated, it'll cause not enough lubrication of stool to be, to be hydrated, so the stools become hard and dry, and thus makes the inertia of movement much more drier and more difficult to eliminate. And um, skipping meals, because there might be an inherent fear in your part if you've been constantly chronically over a long period of time. And there's sometimes this subconscious fear of eating um, so as not to put more food into your body because you're not eliminating as much. And so you may find yourself skipping meals or not feeling even hunger to eat as a result of being so fully impacted. Um, so the combinations of coming back to the food again, uh, when you have cheeses and breads, uh, that's awfully binding as well, or starches of any kind with cheeses. So your dairy, your sugar intake should be nil to low. Um, also, the wheat products, those three factors are all vi binding to the colon. So yes, a change in diet, and I would strongly admonish you to think about going more to just proteins and vegetables, and make sure you get a green organic salad greens uh, in your diet at least once a day to twice a day, and drink your water, one half of your body weight in ounces per day, so, for example, if you are 160 pounds, then half of that is 80 ounces of water per day is the minimum. You can drink more than that, too. 
that will certainly hydrate and flush things through. Too much of animal proteins often can, uh, because it takes nine hours to break down meat in your stomach. The acids must break all that down, but to process it through it takes about nine hours to do that. So uh, lighter proteins like turkey, chicken, fish uh, will break down much quicker, about in half the time, and move through your system a lot better. The use of the, if you don't have enough digestive enzymes, then you need to supplement. Um, when we're under stress, our body's creating some amount of acidity. But when we don't eat, we're still producing acids. And that may lend also to uh, the bloating and the gas that's trapped. And the bloating and the gas that's trapped adds to. Uh, the fact that you feel so full, so that's part of the reason you don't eat as much, or before you even complete a meal, you feel very full. But at the same time, um, eating food combining correctly, as we talked about earlier, would make a huge difference in getting everything digested and moving and getting the motility and contractions moving in your colon. Uh, so I, I strongly, admonish, uh, strongly admonish you to think about if you tried these things and then incorporated some digestive enzymes that would also speed up the transit time of food to break down and move it through your digestive system much quicker. Also the use of some fiber will also help that uh, to move it along and accelerate the time uh, the transit time of food to move through your intestinal tract. And of course, hydration of more water will certainly help you in that process. And um, we are here, if you've tried all those things and it's still not working for you, do consider a series of six colon treatments that will help you to clear out your entire colon, uh, which is five and a half to six feet long, and once we've got that cleared, then it's about the first three days close together. One day, you can first come in. The first day, it's about hydrating the colon, softening the stools, and we will get some out. And the second day, two to three times the amount will come out. And the third day, we'll get most of the rest. And then the last three sessions are spaced once a week so that we are in the process of retraining your bowels to work and getting it toned so that you will be, by the sixth time you're here, you will be eliminating two to three times per day, every day. So give us a call when you're ready. Thank you so much.